Hi there, this is Renee Rubalcaba with Odonet, and today I want to talk a little bit about using the ArcGIS API 4 for JavaScript with TypeScript and the new updated TypeScript definition files. So if you look at the GitHub repo under Esri JS API resources, you'll notice that there's now a 4x folder in here, and this 4x folder is going to have information for the uh, Bower uh, release of the API, a demo application, but it's also got information here for TypeScript. So if you look at the TypeScript page, we provide the definition files here, and we'll talk a little bit about how you can install them using typings. So if you aren't familiar with typings, typings is a command line tool that you can use to manage all your TypeScript definition files. It's the successor to a uh, command line tool called TSD that I was a pretty big fan of. Uh, TSD worked out pretty great, and it, pulled, it was maintained by the people that maintain the definitely typed uh, repo on GitHub to pull in TypeScript definition files. Uh, but TypeScript, uh, the, the typings command line tool, I guess, has a little bit more um, functionality to it. But I've so far uh, found it to be pretty simple to use. Uh, I was a little put off by it at first. I had some trouble getting some stuff working, but you know, not once I got the hang of it, everything seemed to work out pretty good. So I have for this uh, demonstration put up a sample repo up on GitHub called EsriJS 4 TS. And for now, let's go ahead and let's check out our sample application. So I'm basically just going to have this my HTML file. I'm going to bring in the API here, I got my dojo config, and not, nothing else too, too much exciting happening here. Right, so right off the bat, you can see I've got a lot of different files um, over here on inside of my folder. Uh, so I've got my, my dojo config in here, which is pretty basic. I'm going to be pointing to uh, local installations for React. I've got uh, pointing to my app uh, package in here, and my package.json is set up already so that it can go ahead and have everything that we need. I've got the dojo typings in here, which we're going to be installing via NPM. And this is going to have the dojo, dojo X, digit stuff. And it's, uh, it was updated not too long ago, pretty recently. And it's a pretty great typings repo for working with dojo. Uh, I've got some other grunt tooling in here as well as TS and TypeScript. And our, of course, I got my React, React DOM dependencies in here. I also have a little uh, script you can just run uh, grunt. Uh, run and it'll do the grunt watch for you. I'm sorry, npm run to do grunt watch. And I have a post install, so after you do the um, install your npm packages, it's going to go install the typings uh, packages as well. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, but I do have a ts config uh, set up in here, and the way that the grunt file is set up, it's got tooling built in so that if I add new uh, TypeScript files, it'll go ahead and add them to this files array here. So far with TypeScript, maybe in 2.0 they'll do it, but so far the tsconfig.json, this files property that's going to in charge of compiling the TypeScript files for you, it does not uh, accept a glob. So I can't put a uh, like star in here and get them all. Uh, you have to actually um, define each one. But there is tooling set up. Like I said, I have a grunt tool built in that will uh, add the files for me automatically. And I have this typings.dts file in here, and we'll look at that in a second. I got my TS lint. I'm not going to bother you with this. It's all good stuff in here. Uh, the typings.json. So this is used by the typings command line tool to install the uh, typings dependencies I want. And we have, we have the ambient dependencies here. So I've got the ArcGIS API pointing to the GitHub repo. And this is how you bring in a, a file off of GitHub uh, directly. You just point to the actual definition file on GitHub. And for whatever reason, silly reason, when I tried doing this with typings, maybe when, just because when it first came out, maybe this was 100%. I couldn't get this to work. But I, I think it might have just been the way the TypeScript definition files were set up ahead of time. It is working just fine now. Um, I got the React and React DOM in here. And then my typings.dts here. So what I'm doing here is because I've got the dojo typings and node modules, I'm going to reference them in here. But then I want to also reference the ones that are going to be brought in by typings, which are going to be in the typings folder and I'm going to go to main.dts. So let's go ahead and let's install uh, the typings in here. Let's do npm i 
and it's going to go install our node modules and our typings and I will be right back. Okay, so now that we have npm installed the internet, let's go ahead and let's check out our folder here. So we got our node modules installed here and we have the dojo typings, which I'll just kind of uh, show in here for a second. So we've got dojo typings here and we have all the different TypeScript uh, definition files in here. And we're pointing to those in our typings.dts at the root of our application, right? So what the typings folder uh, does when typings installs the definition files, installs a, a main.dts, a browser.dts for the ambient uh, declarations, and installs them each in here. To be honest with you, I don't know what the difference is between using browser and main. Um, I'm going to guess that some TypeScript definition files that are out there are set up to be uh, to work slightly differently in a browser versus main, which might be working in a node environment. Um, that is just a guess. If anyone knows, please let me know. Uh, I am simply just curious about it. So, okay, we've got all that set up. Let me go ahead and do my grunt watch here. So when the grunt watch first runs, it's going to go ahead and do the compiling and hopefully we don't get any errors. Okay, perfect. No errors here. So we know it, that it worked. Okay, so now we can go through and we can start doing some stuff, right? So in my application, we have this TSX file in here. Now, just for reference, a TSX file is slightly different from a TS file, only in that I, by saying it's TSX, it's a TypeScript file with um, JSX inside of it. As you can see, I'm doing here because I'm using React uh, to build out this application, the components here. All right, so, okay, first off the bat, uh, you'll notice that we need to do the imports um, using the ArcGIS API for TypeScript def definition files slightly differently. Um, we have to use the, syn the, the syntax import uh, module is equal to require and then the module name. We, we can't use the from here. And the only reason we're not doing that, it's not that we can't, but the only reason that we're not doing it is because if we uh, made it so you can do impact, or I'm sorry, import map from Esri map, like you normally would with ES6 code, then we would have to write out the, um, the, jo the source JavaScript file for that map module with a, a default uh, method on it. And that means anyone not using TypeScript or not using ES6 would have to say uh, new map.default as a function every time they want to use it. So it's kind of a toss up between uh, what we want to support and definitely want to be supporting uh, users that do not want to use TypeScript or do not want to use ES6 and just want to write their code in plain ES5. So yeah, it's a little bit of a drawback. Uh, you actually could do uh, something like this. So import. I think it's uh, as map from Esri map. So, oops, I got a little extra here. So you could do that, and the compiler is going to go ahead and compile just fine. Uh, it won't be complaining about it. Um, so you, you could also do this if you really want to use the from syntax, uh, you can do it like that and that'll work out just fine. Um, but for this case, I'm just not going to, and since I'm doing it for one, uh, I'll just do it for all the other ones. I don't need to do it for the Re React and React DOM here, but I'll go ahead and do it anyway. So I'm going to import my modules that way, right? And I actually am cheating here because I'm using my local modules. I'm doing it uh, using the from anyway but again in, in my case i mean just because i'm dumb uh, this lets me know that i'm working with the local modules and not something from a, a separate dependency right so you notice here i don't actually have to type out everything so i'm not typing out this map it already knows it's a type of map because uh, typescript is smart it's doing all the inference for me uh, same goes for the view and i'm gonna go ahead and render my dom here right so this one's cool so let's look at the actual component for this so I have this little module here, and its only purpose for this component is to display the center of my map. And if I click on the actual module, just anywhere, click on it, anywhere at all, uh, to go ahead and recenter my map, right? So 
One of the things I like to do is I like to type out stuff. So you're going to see people that prefer to use interfaces over the type keyword. And uh, I think the type keyword is taking kind of a back seat with a lot of TypeScript development. Um, people really do just like using the interfaces for everything. And they work out great. And I, I got to admit that this is probably more, um, you know, just an efficient way to do things. I, however, like to be more precise in what I'm trying to say. So I do create a type. The alias called coordinates here, and it's going to be an Esri type Esri dot point here. But I also wanted to be able to accept a array of numbers. But because um, and that some of the typings and this is TypeScript uh, get a little funky, I also have to let it allow it any here, right? And uh, that's because Esri dot point is taking the constructors uh, from the uh, Esri's point uh, constructor. That's what this means here. So the point constructor takes not just X and Y's, but could take a Z, could take a lat long, and TypeScript compiler complains if I'm not providing those. And you can see down here where I'm saying that I have an initial center here uh, of type coordinates. I have this interface for center here that's only got the X, Y. I don't have lat longs, I don't have a Z, I don't have a couple other things. So it starts to complain about certain things. So I had to type it as any just to get it to work. But either way, I know, just looking at this here, that I've got to type of this coordinates, and my initial center is going to be coordinates, and that's just, for me anyway, more clear and more specific of what I'm trying to do. So I'm a big fan of using type aliases for things like this. So I'm going to have an interface called props, and I'm working with React. And this means that these are going to be the, the properties are going to be uh, supplied to my React components. So I have a view that's a type of Esri map view, Right, and I have initial center type of coordinates. I have my interface for center, which is just X and Y. And I'm going to go ahead and have an interface for my state, which is going to extend center, but I'm also going to add this uh, interacting Boolean here. It's going to be true or false. And I'm going to go ahead and make an interface for my style just because I'm getting interface crazy in here. This could be the style string applied to my React component, which is just going to have a text shadow to kind of make some of uh, those shadowing around the text when you're interacting with it. Okay, so. I'm going to create my component, and it's got some generic types in here for the properties in the state, so I'm going to provide those. And my default state is going to be uh, x0, y0, interacting false. That's fantastic. So now the constructor here, I just do my little uh, super here, and I'm going to bind my uh, methods to themselves, to actually the, this instance here. And then I'm going to go ahead and watch for some... Uh, views to, uh, properties to change and then do something with this actual components. If you want to learn more about this, please check out some of my previous videos, my blog, or uh, some of the ArcGIS uh, JavaScript API 4 documentation on accessors and watching properties. And when the center changes, I'm going to go ahead and grab the interacting in the center from here. I'm going to update the state for my component and it's going to redraw itself. And then I have a default center method here. It's just going to go back, grab the, uh, set the center of my view equal to the initial center, which was provided in the properties. And remember, um, the properties are up here, and I've got my initial center coordinates. So that means that they can be either a type of a point or an array of numbers or pretty much anything at all that the view.center is going to accept. And when I render this out, I've got my little style interface I created over here with my text shadow. And just basically, it's going to, to uh, apply a style to it, whether in, uh, to indicate whether I'm interacting with the actual map or not at the time. All right, so this all looks good, fine and dandy. And this is already compiled for me, so I technically should be able to just run it. Ah, here we go, and it just started. And um, my initial center here was 0, 0. We'll refresh it here. And I could probably update this so it can grab the uh, actual center of the view right when things start. So I'm interacting with it, updating my center here. If I move and touch it, it's gonna or click it and it's gonna go and recenter my map for me. And I'll rotate it though and move it. I can't get my rotation back. So I could probably update my um, little component here to do it, but there's already a, a widget for that provided in the API. So if I came back to my main.tsx over here, and I came over to my map view, and this is the beauty of using TypeScript, is I'm going to automatically get uh, some assistance here in terms of what I can do. So I have a UI property here, and it's going to be an object. 
and this is going to have a uh, property called components. And this is actually an array. Oops, if I can type. And this array is going to take it's an array of strings. So I want the um, we already have zoom, but I need, I'm going to have to indicate uh, zoom in here. And we'll go ahead and uh, can't see. Sometimes those things get in my way. So we'll put the attribution widget as well. And so these are widgets you can add by strings. And you can also add the compass widget by a string. All right, so compile that. And TypeScript's going to do its thing. Let's make sure everything works. Refresh this. And voila, I have my little uh, compass widget in here. Now, the purpose of the compass widget is so that it indicates, as I rotate my map, it's going to rotate as well, let me know where I have, uh, what direction my map is currently pointing, kind of a north arrow. When I click it, though, that's going to bring it right back uh, north and reorient my map for me, which is great. All right, so that is pretty much how you can work with the ArcGIS API 4 for JavaScript. Uh, TypeScript definition files when you want to build a TypeScript application. You, you know, use the typings uh, library, a typings uh, command line tool to load the TypeScript definition files you want. And I, I recommend having a main or, or a, a central .dts file for your application that you can reference to the typings um, definition files that are provided as well as maybe any files that are installed via npm or bower or anything else you might do that depending where you get your definition files from or what libraries you're going to use would also indicate maybe where you're going to install them um, so this all works out really great and like I said it comes in really handy when you want to do uh, some sort of uh, get some assistance from your uh, your IDE in this tape in this case I'm using Visual Studio Code I am a uh, huge fan of Vim I've used Vim for years I'm really good with Vim I'm fast with Vim but even I would have to admit that when it comes to writing TypeScript code uh, Visual Studio Code is hands down probably the uh, best editor for writing TypeScript code and I mean it's made by Microsoft TypeScript is made by Microsoft it's really focused on on that kind of interaction and the great thing is with visual studio code is that even if i wasn't writing in typescript i can still install all those typescript definition files create my ts config point to the definition files with the ts config and just write a javascript application and i would still get a lot of the assistance uh, from the ide telling me that you know i'm trying to pass uh, you know a wrong property to zoom for example uh, it would complain about it and tell me that you're doing something completely wrong. Uh, I get all kinds of errors and you'd get all that assistance from the ID itself, letting you know that you did something wrong. You'd get uh, a little bit of IntelliSense assistance when you're writing your plain JavaScript code. So it comes in really handy uh, to be able to use these TypeScript definition files, even if you're not writing TypeScript. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I hope that uh, helps you get started building out your applications using TypeScript or just JavaScript with the TypeScript definition files. Thank you.